to Water Online Radio, coming to you live from Los Angeles, California, and broadcasting direct from WefTech, the water quality event. And now, here are your hosts, Todd Schnick and Todd Youngblood. And we are back broadcasting live from the Los Angeles Convention Center and the trade show floor of WefTech. I am Todd Schnick, joined by my co-host, Todd Youngblood. Todd, we are kicking off Hour 4 with a bang. Hour 4 already? Hour 4 seems, already. Seems like we just got here. Our, our, our boss is making us work over the lunch hour. I mean, well, what yeah. is that all about? I don't, uh, you know, I just not even, go, don't even get me started on that. I mean, I haven't missed a meal since 1978. And it's very apparent. Unfortunately fortunately for all of you, you're on radio and you don't have to observe that. Uh, but why don't we get to our, our guest, Todd? Do you think that's a good idea? Oh, okay. Okay. Well, we're joined by the by product manager with Brentwood Industries. Welcome to the show, Brian Rothermel. Hey, uh, good morning, uh, Todd and Todd. Great before to be we, here. Before we get into it, why don't you take a few minutes and just walk us through a little bit about you, your background, and the work that you're doing for Brentwood. Well, Todd, I'm a product manager for uh, Wastewater Solutions at Brentwood Industries. Been with the company about uh, five years now. Brentwood is a uh, company that started in plastics. We did a lot of plastics work. We've taken that technology, brought it to the wa- wastewater industry with a series of different products, and excited to be here to talk a b- little bit more about those products. Brian, what are, the, what are the biggest problems and issues that you're helping your customers address? Well, especially in this economy, people are looking for low-cost solutions to uh, comply with lo- local uh, permit uh, regulations for wastewater effluent quality standards, and we're trying to help them get there with low-cost solutions. We have a, have a great solution for submerged fixed film applications that uh, help operators, engineers develop solutions that are cost-effective and get the treatment that's required. When you say low cost, Brian, is that the cost of the products and services themselves, or are you looking at a broader picture in terms of cost? Well, it, it's the uh, it's a very good question. It's the it's the full cost of the system. It's the capital cost of the equipment that uh, would be put in, but it also covers the installation cost. So you want something that's low cost to install that doesn't take a long time to put in place, easy to install, simple to install. So it's the material piece of it, the capital cost. It's the installation of it. And we can't forget about the operational cost of it as well. A lot of these plants and different solutions require high levels of energy to be running blowers to put oxygen into these systems to get the right treatment. So we want to make sure we bring uh, a low cost, both in terms of the capital cost, material cost, the installation cost, and something that's going to be very low cost uh, operationally as well in time. Brian, what do you and your colleagues see as the emerging trends and issues in the water wastewater industry going into 2012? One of the big things is uh, certainly tighter uh, nutrient removal limitations that uh, are being imposed on the different municipalities. Uh, overall, it's a great thing. You know, it's a cleaner environment. It's going beyond just getting uh, organic material out. It's uh, getting toxins like ammonia out. It's getting total nitrogen down to very low levels. And that's that's uh, uh, an emerging trend. You know, it's been, been around for a few years, but every state, every part of this country is going to be seeing tighter nutrient l- removal limits uh, over time. So what is Brentwood Industries doing to, to address these trends? Well, it's a good question. So what we can do, and a good part of our work is helping plants retrofit, uh, take existing facilities that they have, existing tanks that they have, to be able to use that infrastructure effectively and to retrofit it to make it adaptable to meet the lower nutrient limits. Brian, when I hear retrofit, that's kind of backward looking. And this industry is so forward looking from a technology standpoint. How do you how do you match those two facts up? Well, re- retrofit is oftentimes uh, the, the lower cost uh, solution as well. And a lot of the cost of these plants is in building those th- that tankage, putting that volume in place. And if we can use existing infrastructure to, to uh, achieve the nu- tighter nutrient limits, that's, uh, that's fantastic. Gosh, th- so I would think integration of the old and the new would be a, a naughty challenge for your engineers. Is that the case? It, uh, it can be. Uh, obviously, we have to think about uh, things very carefully, make sure that, yeah, that we can make it uh, backwards compatible with the existing process that's there, but to take that uh, plant forward and be able to hit the tighter nutrient limits uh, that are required in the future. Brian, help the Water Online audience, thousands of professionals, better understand the value that you're truly bringing to your customer by sharing a, a specific recent win that you achieved on behalf of one of your customers. There, there was a, a plant in Michigan that we recently uh, rehabbed, retrofitted, uh, whatever the word we want to use. That plant had some existing uh, tankage in place. That plant was not uh, meeting ammonia effluent limits and looked around at different solutions that could help that plant uh, achieve the nutrient limits. They had a lot of choices with different systems. Eventually, they chose a uh, 
Brentwood AccuFast Submerged uh, Fixed Film System. And this is a structure cheat media system that was put into that basin and allowed that plant to uh, comply with the tighter ammonia limits that were required out of the plant. Uh, again, they had some different choices, different media types that could have been put into that basin. In the end, they chose Brentwood, and it's been operating incredibly smoothly here since installation. Brian, back to the uh, technology theme. There's so much of it coming out, and you have to not only keep track of the new stuff, but all the old stuff to do the... I like the idea of rehab, by the way. It sounds like you've had a naughty municipal <laughs> plant. But, but, but in, in retrofits and all the new technology, how, how big a role is collaboration playing, and how do, you, how do you collaborate with other suppliers of products and services? It, it's very important. You know, you, you, oftentimes, you can't bring the whole story to a given, the, the whole solution to a given uh, customer. Obviously, our system requires aeration, fine bubble diffusers that are kicking air into these uh, systems. It's a very important part of our system. Uh, Brentwood doesn't have uh, the expertise or the capability at this point to be providing that t uh, type of equipment. Uh, we have a number of excellent suppliers that we've worked with uh, supplying that aeration equipment that we, and I love the word collaboration because it, it truly is a collaboration to bring a, a solution to, uh, to a municipality, to a plant with another supplier. Yeah, and if you can do that, you're right back to lowering the cost, I would imagine. A a absolutely. Uh, recognizing that you can't uh, always do it all yourself, and it's important to uh, collaborate where it makes sense. Brian, uh, Brentwood is exhibiting at WefTech, yes? Yes, we are. We're in uh, booth 2420 in the, uh, the South Hall. We have some great demonstrations out there, some great uh, displays, good demonstrations of the technology that we brought to the show here. So other than product demos, what is your principal objective here at WefTech? It's always to, to spread awareness of uh, solutions uh, of what we can bring to the market. It's just great being at a show like this, uh, you know, contacting engineers, speaking with our local uh, representatives that uh, support us in the marketplace. And, of course, looking at you know, plants that may need our help in the future. It does seem to me that the, the bigger agenda for most organizations here at WefTech is market, market education, not necessarily lead generation, although that's obviously very important. Uh, but by far. I mean, by far, it's, it's market, just market awareness. Uh, nobody's going to walk away from our booth saying, I want to place an order for a million dollars of sure, equipment. That sure. doesn't happen. But, well, Todd uh, would. Oh, darn. <laughs> you got a big, uh, big check there, right? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brian, I hate to say it, but we're out of time. Uh, before we let you go, uh, share with the audience how they can contact Brentwood Industries and learn more about the good works that you're doing. Okay. Uh, the, probably the best way is to visit our website. It's www.brentwoodprocess.com, spelled exactly as you'd expect. Brian Rothermel, it was a real pleasure. Thank you for joining us today. No, oh, thank you. It's been great being here. Thanks, Brian. Thanks. Okay, that wraps this segment. On behalf of Todd Youngblood, I'm Todd Schnick. Water Online Radio will be right back.